what up what up Wimbush here with the last part of the series thank you guys for watching the other two if you did if you didn't make sure you go back to the previous videos so that you can follow us along here and again i said um i'll put this project file up on um i guess gumroad or try to put it up on my facebook so you guys can kind of break it down for yourselves as well but um to get started on this part i'm going to i'm going to go to my redshift material now there's a shader here called incandescent incandescent yeah i don't know how to say it but basically it's a glow so you can see here if i click on my edit shader graph we start off with a white glow and if i click on my rs i can't even say the word incandescent incandescent something like that we have these attributes over here on the right hand side so i could change my color let's say you want to do like a, a baby blue one of my favorite colors then we can bring the intensity up to like five so it's really hot and then we'll drag that over onto our rock and let's see what this looks like if i come into my redshift render view yeah you can see we're starting to get some hot particles in there um actually let's duplicate this rock so I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on my rock, hold down left control, click and drag. I have a duplicate rock here now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, left right click, or sorry, left control, left click, drag my texture that I made here. And I'm just gonna make this one down to two for intensity multiplier. And that's gonna make it a little bit darker blue just to add some variance in there. So on my wall break, under my redshift tag, I'm going to add this one as well. So now if I put on random, I think it should give us a little bit more variety in there. Let's see. Yeah, so you can see it gives us a little bit of variance in there. So if you wanted to have, you know, random colors and whatnot, that's how you would do that. And then let's add a dome i like adding dome lights so that i can use hdr so let's add a dome light and then go to general like our path and i showed you guys this in my one video but i'll show you again if you didn't watch the other series there's this cool website called hdr haven so if you go here you can get a bunch of free hdr maps and so you can click outdoor skies indoor studio there's like a ton of really cool stuff in here so if you're ever looking for something to light with that's realistic definitely check out that site there i downloaded a bunch already let me see if i can find it on my nas drive here um let's see i like this one dramatic no Okay, let's see what it looks like now yeah so dramatic lighting is one of my go-to for interior stuff like this i mean i just think it looks cool and again i'll leave that for you guys so you guys can download that as well but it's making our room look a little bit dark so that whenever our rocks are falling the rubble is admitting what's happening in the room which could look pretty cool and then if I go to my lights again and add infinite light, and then if I click on my infinite light and go to my coordinates, you can see it in the viewport that we can start to add shadows in here, which add a little bit more depth. All I gotta do is turn my radius here and you can play around with it to your liking. And let's see what it looks like in our viewport. So now you can see like shadows against the wall and everything there. Um, it's a little bit too bright. So let's go to my general intensity multiplier. Knock it down like 0.2 maybe. I just wanted to add a little bit of shadow depth in there. Let me see. I'm just making it way too dramatic more than I want it. There you go. So something like that's not bad. 
So again, that's the stuff you go around and play with till you find something that you're liking. And then the last piece that I promised to show you guys, let me save this real quick, is if you have a Adobe account, you can go to mixamo.com and they have a bunch of mocap data here. So if I go to browse animations, I'm just gonna use the generic character in here. We're gonna look for like a, a kick. You can basically just go through here and find something that you like. Let's do a roundhouse kick. Yeah, see, that one's cool there. And then you can play with these attributes on the side, like for style. See, he's a little bit more sloppy now, but if you put up to 100, he's more precise. You know, you can change the height. So, yeah, this is something you can play around with. And then when you're ready, hit download. Leave it as a FBX, um, leave it with skin, frame rate. I usually like to pick 60. I like working in 60 FPS, but if you're on a client job and you have to use 30 or 24, that's there as well. Then you just hit download. I should have it downloaded already. And then, um, let me see, roundhouse kick. Since it's an FBX, that all pops up. So yeah, there we go, there's our guy. He does our roundhouse kick here. So I'm just gonna go over here, select everything, go to object and group it. And then I'm gonna just name my group here, character, go to edit, hit copy. Then I'm gonna go back into my other project here. And then let's just paste this guy in here. So now we have our character. If I turn off the lights here, you can see him. There we go. So now I have my character here. Uh, we'll want to take this sphere. We're going to take one of these display tags and put it on our sphere so we don't see it. Okay, so let's go back up to our character. Let's move them towards the wall. And let's run them through, see where his kick lane's at. So he's extended right there it looks like about 80 so I'm gonna move them back just a tad bit here we go and then we're gonna have to move it so because before we had everything starting from the front but it looks like he hits the wall at about 80 so I'm gonna go over here to layout go to animate and that brings up our animation timeline down here basically I'm just going to grab all my keyframes that's not on my character can align them to the kick. So I'm going to click, drag everything over to about 80. Oh, you know what? That's not going to work because I did, I did my um, caching here. So I'm going to have to actually clear my cache now when i drag it through the timeline there we go kick and you can see the particles looks like he's pooping here but that's because in our xp system let me go back to my other display i'm gonna bring my attribute window over here actually so we can see better okay so for my emitter i'm going to go to my emission tab and let's start the emission at 80 now. And then for the wall break, let's start at 70. Yeah, let's start at yeah 75. And then let's drag this through and see where everything stops. So around 176. So I'm gonna go back to my sphere, change the timing to end at like 175. And now, whenever I play everything back, it should be lined up properly. So it's gonna run a little bit slower, of course, because I had to stop my RAM cache. Let's see, he lifts his leg up. He starts to kick, and he's gonna hit it right. Bam. And it didn't do up, oh, that's why. All right, so whenever it hits there, this is just give and take. I'm gonna go to my keyframes, 
and they start it at 80 but that's not when it actually starts touching the wall so there we go all right so there we have it lined up now to wherever he hits the wall so let's go back again Command control let's hit save let's turn this through he's standing up in the stance he's getting ready to gear up to kick the wall here he comes with the roundhouse kick anderson silva slow motion matrix move and it should collide right there bam yeah it's a little bit off but you know you just gotta play around with it till you get it right but yeah i mean it's just all fun you know just play around with this stuff see all the particles going crazy over here let's um let's go to our redshift aov manager let's add some we got some depth to there we can add let's add some reflections and our emitter there we go emissions so now whenever we look at our let's pull this in a little bit and actually let's add some texture to our guy here so it could be cool to see him glowing on his joints and then maybe his surface is let's make another material so i'm just gonna make it plastic make it let's make it blue again so i'm gonna drag this over to his surface now he's all textured up so we come over to our render view let's render this up turn our lights back on there we go so he's looking cool and then everything that we have in our aov here if you come over here to beauty we can select let's say reflections so that's what our reflection pass would look like this is what our emission pass would look like which is cool when you do compositing and then depth you can check out my depth tutorial that i did but as a quick recap you click your z come over here go to z normalize and then click the check mark off of here and then you'll get your you'll get your depth pass here which I don't even use for camera blur a lot. Like sometimes it just looks cool as atmospheric effect. You can see it looks like fog is there in the background. So I like rendering that out just so I can use that for compositing. But yeah, that's basically going to be it for this video. I hope you guys have fun. I hope it answered a lot of questions. And then, um, yeah, be sure to come back. Check out my next series that I'm going to be working on. It's going to be another X particle one. So yeah. Thank you guys again for checking this series out. Make sure you subscribe, tell your friends about it, hit the like button, always hit me up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, my VR account over on Veer. And um, yeah, until next time, keep designing, keep playing around and hit me up with any tips and stuff that you guys got.